going guys so I had a little bit of an unintentional 5,000 foot GoPro drop test over the weekend and this is gonna be talking about that so this right here is the GoPro that fell off of the tail of this stunt plane at the Oregon International Air Show this past weekend this was the second time this camera has ever been used and luckily we were able to save about the first hour of footage while it recorded but then because of the actual impact hitting the ground, the micro SD card shot out of the GoPro. Obviously the footage is corrupted and I've tried several different pieces of software to salvage it and all of them say this is way more corrupted than we can deal with. So that's good to know if you plan to eject your micro SD card while filming. Anyways, I didn't actually see this come off the plane because they're really small and it was 5,000 feet up, but there was a second GoPro running on top of the wing and you can find it fall off right here. This is the opening maneuver to Mike's show and funny enough, this is actually not the first time this has happened. Just a couple months ago, we had a Samsung Gear 360 mounted on the same position on the tail right here and during the same entry to his show, that camera fell off as well. Sadly, we were not able to find that 360 camera so we're really lucky to be able to inspect this GoPro. So when I found this, I was actually very surprised to see in how good of shape this was. So the case, the actual back piece that uh, clips into the back, um, this is completely off, but I think this can actually clip back in. The top piece of the case though is pretty severely cracked. This is no longer usable, and I believe from looking at the damage on the top of the GoPro, I think it landed top down because there's a pretty large indent on the top, and that would make sense why it squished the battery and popped out the micro SD card. On the back side, the screen is not shattered. It's just popped out about a 16th of an inch. And there's actually a pretty large crack going through the front side that uh, separated half of the GoPro. When I picked it up, it was no longer recording and it was turned off. And I was actually able to turn it on for a little bit, but then things started acting funky and now it does not work at all. So I showed this to a couple people and they were all very surprised at how good this looks. It looks like it's all intact, even though it just fell 5,000 feet onto a runway. This really goes to show at how durable these things are made because if you would have said five years ago you'd be able to take a camera this small with this good of quality, drop it from 5,000 feet and still be able to look at most of the footage, I would have said you're crazy. All right, so since this camera does not work anymore, I think we should take this as a learning opportunity and open this guy up. So it looks like this back screen here is basically just to light up this panel right here, which is this is where the data comes from, and then it uh, creates the pixels on here, so this is just backlighting. This is the actual screen itself, and this pops off very easily, and I'm sure you'll be able to repair that pretty easily as well. Uh, this front lens is actually meant to kind of come off if you want to put different filters on there. I don't know if it's like super meant to be because I had to bend that piece right here, but uh, this is all kind of normal. There looks like there's zero damage whatsoever to the actual camera of the GoPro itself. Now I'm going to try to attack this uh, crack right here and see if I can pull the full front half off. It feels like this is basically just glued on. Would you look at that right there? That is the sensor. I'm going to say that this right here, what I'm holding, is the most expensive part of the camera. That's really what you're paying for, all the technology that goes into that piece right here, and then this is the lens. That's actually kind of a longer lens than I was expecting because this is like such a fish eye. Um, but I guess it kind of makes sense because you got this very large circle on the front, um, but the sensor goes in quite a bit there. Let's see if I can take this completely off. Oh wow, look at that. So, uh, so the charging and the HDMI out are like right beneath the sensor there. This is so cool. Look how small all these circuits are right here. 
It's fascinating. You never see the inside of these magical devices here. It looks like this piece here is bent. I'm not sure if I did that, um, but it is right underneath this part that got squished. So I think this might have caused uh, quite a bit of internal damage. Definitely, I did not do all that bending back there. Um, so I think all that bending in the back here, um, that was caused by the actual impact of the hit. We got a lot of ribbon wires going throughout here. It looks like this blue ring, do you see this? Right here is the watertight seal, and everything is basically glued shut. Um, oh, <laughs> there it goes. So everything is glued shut. We got this sort of rubbery um, water, watertight seal, and that makes sure that no water or salt water would get into the electronics here. So this camera is really perfected in terms of complete design. This is, that's why GoPros have always been some of the best action cameras out there. So with the new Hero 7s, what they've really been pushing is the super good image stabilization. And I wonder if that has something to do with this system that I tore apart on the back here. There's um, some foam and moving parts. I'm not entirely sure how this all went together. So it looks like there could be some form of optical stabilization or actually moving the sensor around. But if I remember right, from a lot of their test footage they're showing, one way you can tell if it's a digital stabilization is by looking at the lens flare. And if I'm recalling correctly, their lens flare was moving all around. And that's one sign of using digital stabilization. So I'm not sure if they're quite at the point yet of using actual in-body stabilization. I think it may just be digital and this uh, foam and extra fluff to uh, stabilize it is just adding a little bit to that. Well, there we go. There's the inside of a new GoPro and now completely torn apart. I wonder what they'd say if I tried to return this. It'd be like, yeah, we had a bit of a technical difficulty <laughs> with the GoPro. I don't know, but this is pretty darn cool. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I guess that's what it is. And if you're interested in GoPros or DSLR cameras or filmmaking in general, make sure to consider subscribing to this channel because I love posting videos just like this. Thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to keep it pro.